This principle asserts that the sample selection is random. Second principle, that is principle of inertia of large numbers. So this is also one of the important principle of sampling. The target population is defined to see that it will suitable for the research study or not. So if you want to collect the information from the consumers, then there are a number of private organizations who will provide details about the consumers. Hello everyone, I am Harshita, lecturer, Department of Commerce, Vidyashram First Grade College, the Temple of Excellence, Mysore. My dear students, today we are in the third session of Unit 4 of the subject Business Research Methods and this is for 5th SEM BCom student and the Unit 4 is all about sampling and hypothesis testing. So already we have discussed few of the concepts, let us quickly recall what we have discussed in our previous session. So in a previous session, I have covered this topic that is we were discussing about the sampling methods, correct? So we were discussing everything about sampling. So we have learned what is this sample size. Now for in order to record the information or in order to collect the information, what the researcher will do? He will select certain number of respondents. So what is the number of respondents which is included in each and every sample? So that number, that is number of respondent is called as what? Sample size. Next we have discussed about factors determining the sample size. On the basis of what the researcher will decide the sample size. So if the sample size is 100. So on the basis of what he is going to decide that the sample size should be 100 or if it is 1000 or if it is 10,000. So it depends upon the research work of the researcher where he is going to decide the sample size. Along with that there are various factors which influence to decide the sample size. Next we have learnt about merits of sampling method. So what are the various merits? So when you compare to census method, so how the sampling method is beneficial? That is what are the merits of sampling method? So in order to go through all these topics, you have to know what is the meaning of sample. So what is sample? Instead of going through collection of information from the whole population, so what the researcher will do? Researcher will select some people as a sample or some respondents as a sample. So that is known as what? Sampling. So here he is not going to collect the information from the whole population. So he will take some of the people which is considered as sample and that sample will represent the whole population. So we have discussed in detail in the previous session. Next we have learned about the demerits of sampling method. What are the disadvantages or what are the demerits of sampling method? In today's session we shall continue with a new topic that is principles of sampling and few more topics we have to discuss here. So there are two principles of sampling that is two main principles of sampling. So coming to the first one that is principle of statistical regularity. Now what does this principle tells us? So here the principles of statistical regularity derived from the theory of probability in mathematics. So we have a probability in mathematics from which this principle is being derived that is principle of statistical regularity. So in the statistic or in the mathematics we have probability. So from that probability this particular principle of sampling is been derived. According to this principle when a large number of item is selected at a random from the universe then it is likely to possess the same characteristics as that of the entire population. Now what does that principle tells us that? So instead of studying the whole population, so this principle which tells that is, so instead of studying the whole population, we shall select some people from that whole population who will represent the whole population. Now here, suppose here now this is a whole population. So here there are number of respondents. So instead of going through whole population or instead of collecting the information from the all the respondents or from all the population, here the researcher tells that we shall divide or we shall divide this population into a small part where from each 
part all the population or all the respondents will be gathered that is a small group of people will be gathered from all part of the population so this small group is called as sample now this group will represents the whole population so whatever the information we are going to collect from the whole population we shall collect that information from this small group of people who is known as what sample and whatever the information which is collected through sample so that information will represents the whole population here whatever the results what we get from this small group of people will represents the whole population so that is what this principle of sampling tells us that is instead of collecting the information from whole group of people or from the whole population it is very difficult for us because it requires huge amount of money at the same time lot of time is required instead of that we shall make a small group where from each division we shall take few individuals and make a small group and that small group of people will represents the whole population this principle asserts that the sample selection is random here how we are going to select the sample randomly we are going to collect the individual in order to frame a sample so we are not going to select a particular group of people so from a group of population randomly we are taking some individual as sample and we are going to collect the information that is every item has an equal and likely chance to be selected so here i have told you now how to collect this sample or how to frame this sample so we are going to randomly select few of the individual from the whole population and then we shall make a small group which is called as sample now this sample will represents the whole population that is about the first principle that is principle of statistical irregularity now what you have to remember here this principle has been derived from the mathematical probability so here it has been derived from the probability in mathematics so this principle tells us that instead of collecting the information from a huge group of people or from the whole population we shall select only certain people randomly and make a small group who is known as sample and that sample will represents the whole population or whatever the results which is derived from that small sample will represents the whole population now coming to the second principle that is principle of inertia of large numbers so this is also one of the important principle of sampling that is principle of inertia of large number now let us see what does this principle tells about sampling the principle of inertia of large number states that larger the size of the sample the more accurate the conclusion is likely to be now what does it mean so it tells that instead of collecting the information from 10 people let us collect the information from the more number of people so let us take the example 100 now whatever the information which is collected from the 10 people so it is less accurate than the information which is collected from the 100 people in the sense more the number of sample size more the accuracy in the information which is been collected so this principle tells us that more the number of sample size suppose instead of collecting the information from just 100 people and if we go for collection from the 1000 people it may be difficult for us to collect but more accuracy will be there if we collect the information from the 1000 people so more the number more the accuracy of information this principle is based on the notion that large number are more stable in their characteristic than the small numbers so it is that if we select more members in our sample so it will be or the accuracy of the information will be more at the same time more stability will be there if we select more number of people in the sample and the variation in the aggregate of large number is insignificant so if we collect the information from more group of people we will get more number of opinion as well as different type of information can be 
collected. It does not mean that there is no variation in the large number. There is but is less than in the smaller number. So, when compared to the small group of people, variations will be more in case of large group of people. So, what you have to remember under this principle? So, here larger the number of sample size, the information which is collected by the researcher will be more accurate. More the number, more the accuracy in information. So, these are the two important principles of sampling. So, the first one was principle of statistical regularity and the second one was principle of inertia of large numbers. Now, coming to the next topic that is steps in sampling process. Very important topic and I have already told you if you are going to learn about the process, it should be a step by step process. You can't skip any of the process in between. At the same time, you can't add any of the process in between. It should be a step by step process and it should be in the one by one format itself. So, let us see what are the steps which are involved in the sampling process. So, steps involved in the sampling process are given below. So, these are the few process here and always the process of sampling depends upon the researcher. Researcher as well as the research work what is going to undertake. So, depending upon that the sampling process will be decided. In the same way it not only confined to sampling process, if you are going to business research process also. Here it also depends upon the researcher how he is going to select the research process. So, it depends upon his work, it depends upon the topic what he has taken, it depends upon the problem what he has in the research activity. So, everything will be involved in deciding the process. Now, coming to the sampling process here, first process is that defining the target population. So, let us discuss each and every point in detail in today's session. So, time being you remember there are seven important steps or process in sampling. So, the first one is defining the target population. Second one is specifying the sampling frame. Third one is specifying the sampling unit. And the fourth one is selecting the sampling method. And the fifth one is determining sample size. So, here he has to decide what is the number of respondent. So, that is sample size. Next one is specifying the sampling plan and the seventh one is that is last one in the sampling process is selecting the sample. So, these are the few process or the sampling process which is followed by the researcher. Now, coming to the first one. Defining the target population. Now, this is a first process in sampling that is defining the target population. Now, whenever a researcher wants to collect the information, so he knows that instead of going through whole population that is through census method, so it is better that he will go for the sampling method. So, he has decided that he has to go for the sampling method. Now, he knows the problem. Correct. So, from where he has to collect? So, who is the target population? So, how he has to collect the information? So, that he has to analyze first. Who is the target population? That is from whom he has to collect the information to gather the information or data. The first step in the sampling process is to define the target population. So, there are number of or the number of characteristics or the number of individuals who are there in the population. Now, the researcher wants to know from whom he can specifically collect the information. Generally, the target population is defined on the basis of certain characteristics. So, it depends upon the characteristics of the problem what the researcher is going to solve. So, depending upon that, he has to select the target population. The population is defined on the basis of nature. So, it depends upon the nature of the individual or it may be on the basis of income or on the place of location of the target group including the time frame. So, it depends upon the time frame also. So, what is the duration of the research work? Depending upon that, he can select the target population. The target population is defined to see that it will suitable for the research study or not. Now, 
as I've told you, he knows that he wants to collect the information. Suppose if the time duration is too short, then he can't go abroad and collect the information because collection of the information in the abroad requires more time as well as more money. In that case, it depends upon the characteristics or the nature of problem what the researcher is going to select. So depending upon that, he has to go for target population. That is, he has to know from whom he has to collect the information. For example, a company needs to undertake research to estimate the demand for micro ovens used in the kitchen. So here the researcher wants to study about the using of micro ovens in the kitchen. Here the company selects the homemakers as the target population. So who will know much about this kitchen work? The homemakers, correct? So here the researcher wants to select the target population as homemakers. So homemakers will be the target population. In the same way, if the researcher wants to collect the information from the students, then who is the target population? Students are the target population. There also he has to segregate whether it is a school students or college students, correct? So whether it is a medical students or any other type of students. So target population have to be decided in advance. Now coming to the second one, specifying the sampling frame. So he has to specify the sampling frame. Let us see what does this sampling frame is about. Soon after defining the target population, now he knows that who is the target population that is from whom he has to collect the information. The next step before the researcher in the sampling process is to say specify the sampling frame. That is, now he knows from whom he has to collect the information. But how to collect the information will be decided in the second process. That is, how to contact the respondents. That will be the second process. That is, how to contact. Now, if you see the previous example, the target population was homemakers. Correct? Now, how to contact them individually? All the homemakers have to be contacted and collect the information. Now, how to contact? So, that will be the second process. The sampling frame refers to the statement of elements to be included in the sampling. So, what are the various statement of elements to be included in the sampling? That will be contained in the sampling frame. So, in order to collect the sample, the researcher has to search the details of the target population. So, what he has to do? He has to collect the details about the target population. So, as I told you, if the target population is homemakers, now in order to collect the information from them, he has to know something about them, correct? So, in order to do that, he has to collect the information. The details of the target population can be obtained from various sources. So, there are a number of sources to collect the information. It may be from the directories where the numbers can be collected of the respondents or from any other sources, he can collect the information or from any other postal department or from any other organization. So, there are a number of private organizations who will help the researchers to collect the information about the respondents. Many private organizations also involved in preparing the details of the consumers. So, if you want to collect the information from the consumers, then there are a number of private organizations who will provide details about the consumers. So, here the second step is that how to collect the information. So, here some information or some details regarding the respondents have to be collected. The third step is that specifying the sampling unit. Now, who will be the sample sampling unit? So, that has to be decided in the third process. The sampling unit is a basic unit. It should be selected very carefully since it helps for research work. So, let us see what is the sampling unit. So, this unit supports the research work and it supplies the needed information for research. So, by selecting the good sampling unit, so we will get the exact information for a research. So, for example, if the sampling or the sampling population, so if the target population is students, so as I told you, target population is students, but what is sampling unit? 
Now, I want the students of only 8th standard. So, this will be the sampling unit. That is, students of 8th standard will be the sampling unit. So, if you take the target population as school students, so it will start from 1 to 10th, correct? But I want the information only from the 8th standard. So, that will be what? Sampling unit. So, I know what is the target population. So, I know who is the target population. In that target population itself, I want to know who is the exact sampling unit. So, students is the target population. Among the students, 8th standard student is my sampling unit. So, from 8th standard student itself, I can collect the information for my research work. Then, sampling unit will be 8th standard student. For example, if the women between the age group of 20 to 25 years are said to be the sampling unit, then so here women is a target population. But what is sampling unit? Women between 20 to 25 years will be the sampling unit. Then the researcher contact the target group that is women between 20 to 25 years and obtain their opinion for the micro Oven. So, clear about this. So, there are a lot of difference between target population as well as this sampling unit. Thus, each family consisting women between 20 to 25 age group will become the sampling unit for the purpose of research study. So, this is about the sampling unit. Next one is selecting sampling method. So, we know who is the target population. We have collected all the details about the respondents. Now, we have decided sampling unit also. The fourth step is that selecting the sampling method. Sampling method will clearly explain the way of selecting the sampling unit. So, this helps us to tell the way of selecting the sampling unit. So, what are the various ways to select the sampling unit? The selection of the sampling method is influenced by the business research objective. Now, which method we have to follow? It depends upon the research objective. So, it depends upon the activities that has to be conducted in the research in order to achieve the objective. In addition to this, the availability of finance along with the objective, we are a lot of factors which influence and selection of sampling method. So, it may be depending upon the finance, time constraint. So, it depends upon the time also. The nature of the problem to be examined will also affect the sampling method selection. So, in our next session, we are going to discuss in detail about all the sampling methods. So, there you will come to know what are the sampling methods. So, there are number of sampling methods like probability sampling and non-probability sampling. So, these are the two main types. Under that, we have lot of types to be learned. Now, selecting sample methods. So, what you have to remember? It depends upon the researcher and it depends upon the objectives of the research also. Other than that, there are many factors which influence selection of sampling method. It may be the amount which is required, what is the time duration which is required, at the same time, what are the resources which is available. So, depending upon that, sampling method has to be selected. The sampling methods are classified into probabilistic sampling and non-probabilistic sampling. So, I have told you there are probabilistic sampling as well as non-probabilistic sampling. So, these are the two main methods. Under that, there are various types to be discussed. So, this is about selecting the sampling method. Next one is determining the sample size. Hope you know the difference between target population, sampling unit and now comes the sampling size. Now, what do you mean by sampling size? So, it is a number of individual which is included in a particular sample. That is known as what? Sampling size. Suppose if it is 100 individuals or the 100 respondents, then the sampling size is 100. So, if it is 10,000, then the sampling size is 10,000. Okay. So, sampling size in the sense what? It is the number of individual which is included in each and every sample. So, determining the sample size is the process of choosing the number of observations or replicates to include in the statistical sample. So, I have already told you that is number of observations or number of individuals or number of replicants which is included in each and every sample. 
So by determining the sample size, the researcher can make inference about the population from a sample. So in order to draw an exact conclusion, so he has to know what is a sample size. In practice, the sample size used in the research study is generally determined on the basis of time, cost or convenience of the collection of data. So here also sample size depends upon the research work. So if the duration is too long, then he can go for large number of sample size. Or if duration is too short, then small size has to be selected. At the same time, the amount what he has. So if he has sufficient amount of money to collect the data from more number of respondents, then the sample size can be more. The other consideration is the need for it to offer sufficient statistical power. That is, if you want to collect the data or if you want to or if the information was to be more accurate or if the information want to be more accurate, then he can go for large number of sample size. In complex studies, there are many several different sample sizes. So it depends upon the researcher as well as research work and number of other factors like time, money as well as objective of the business also decides the sample size. Next, specifying the sample plan. So here you know for each and every activity to be conducted, there should be a proper plan. Here also under sampling, there should be a proper plan which is known as sampling plan. Let us see what are included in the sampling plan. So sampling plan is a base for which the research starts. So before the research activity starts, so the researcher has to make a proper plan so that the objective of research is fulfilled properly. So it starts. So before the research starts, proper research plan has to be drafted and it includes the three major decisions. Let us see what are those decisions which are included in the research plan. So the first one is sampling unit. So I have already told you sampling unit means what? From whom exactly the information has to be collected. So what should be the sampling unit? This includes choosing the category of the population to be surveyed. So here I have told you if you are going to survey or if you are going to conduct a research activity on micro oven that is use of micro oven. So here the target population is a women whereas the sampling unit will be women between the age of 20 to 25 years or 30 to 35 years. So that exact category is called as what? Sampling unit. So this is the first and foremost decision in the sampling plan that initiates the research. So this is the first step in the sampling plan. For example, in the case of banking industry, should the sampling unit consist of savings bank account or current bank account holders or both. Now, if you see this examples here, so in the banking industry, if the researcher wants to collect the information from the account holders, so whether he has to go for savings bank account holder or current account holder. So here he has to make a decision or from both he wants to collect or not. So suppose he wants to collect the information from savings bank holder, then the sampling unit will be the savings bank account holder. Okay. So and should it be a male account holder or female account holder? So here also they can segregate as male or female account holder. So that exact category or exact identification of the category in the population is called as what? Sampling unit. Now coming to the sample size as we have discussed just now. So what do you mean by sample size? The number of individuals from whom the researcher wants to collect the information. The second decision in the sampling plan is to determine the size of the sample. So what is the exact number of respondents from whom the researcher wants to collect the information? That means how many objects in the sample is to be surveyed? So what is the exact number? Suppose it is 100, then 100 is the sample size. Suppose the information has to be collected from 1000 people, then 1000 will be the sample size. For example, how many number of current account holders to be surveyed? So for example, we shall take it as 100 
account holders has to be surveyed. Then the sample size will be 100. The larger the number of current account holders, the more is a reliable result. So this I have already discussed in a principle of sampling where more the numbers in sampling or more the sample size, more accurate the results will be. Next sampling procedure. So what are the procedure or selecting the procedure? So selecting sampling procedure is a final decision that completes the sampling plan. That is what is the actual or what is the exact procedure to be followed. In this method, the researcher will decide the method that can allow every object in the population that has equal chance of being selected. Now here, whether he has to go for probability method or non-probability method. So whether all the respondents, now I have selected 10,000 as sample size. Now from all 10,000, whether I have to collect the information or we shall take into consideration only few of them out of this 10,000 units or all the 10,000 units are actually participating in the research activity. So that is the last stage in the sampling procedure. So how the respondents have to be involved in collection of data. Next last step in the sampling process is the selecting of sample. So we are done with all the six process. So after making a proper sampling plan, next we have to select the sample. Sample can be defined as a set of respondents selected from the sample size. So we know what the method have to be followed, whether we have to go for probability method or non-probability method. So in probability method, we are going to involve all the respondents, that is equal chance will be given to the respondents to participate in the research activity. Whereas under non-probability, we will not involve everyone, but we will select some person as a sample size. Out of that person, we will not involve everyone in collection of data. So here, sample can be defined as a set of respondents selected from the sample size for the purpose of survey. This is a final step in the sampling process. That is selecting the sample. That is from whom we have to collect the information that is selecting the sample. In this method, actual selection of the sample will take place. So actual selection of the sample will take place in the last stage of the sampling process. So this is how we are going to collect the information. So there are various step by step process to be followed in the sampling process. So in my next session, I'm going to discuss one more topic that is types of sampling. So we shall discuss an important topic that is types of sampling where we are going to learn various methods of sampling or we can call it as sampling methods. So my dear students, hope you have understood today's session. See you all in my next session with a new topic. Till then, take care. Thank you.